the controversial decision to cast a person of color as an elf, to the backlash making the Rings of Power an embarrassing flop. Here's the real reason why Lord of the Rings fans are angry. Things went sideways fast when the Rings of Power cast was announced, especially when fans learned that Ismail Cruz Cordova would be playing an elf. The Puerto Rican actor was a virtual nobody before landing the gig. With just a couple reoccurring roles in the Rings of Power, his performance was sure to put him on the map. But there's a bit of a problem. You see, Cordova's a Latino man, and most fans feel that Tolkien's elves should be white. They think Lord of the Rings is supposed to represent an idealized version of medieval Europe, and a person of color should have no place in the story, let alone as an elf. Cordova wasn't the only controversial casting, by the way. Sofia Numvedi was on the receiving end of a lot of hate, too. In case you didn't know, she's the actress who played Princess Disa of Casa Doom. As a black woman, you can probably imagine how much that rubbed fans the wrong way. That Nambiti was the one playing the character. We've never even seen a dwarf woman in a Tolkien adaptation before, and they're barely mentioned in the books, so it was a bit of a surprise to see her in the first round of promo photos. The backlash that ensued had an undeniably racist undertone, and the showrunners were forced to hire an on-set therapist to help. The reason this happened was because the cast members weren't just facing abuse on Twitter. Things had gotten way out of hand. Cordova's PayPal got hacked, and his bank accounts nearly suffered the same fate too. But that wasn't even the craziest thing to happen. He started receiving hate mail from fans that wanted him gone, for good, and sent him suspicious-looking objects after finding out where he lived. Even his friends got threatening messages, which made things so much worse. As for Sofia Nambate, she faced racial slurs, inappropriate comments about her weight, and calls for her to give up the role. In her own words, she went through the seven stages of grief after all this went down. But to her credit, she still gave a solid performance as Princess Disa. Cordova did the same as Aaron did, so that onset therapist must have helped. The Rings of Power showrunners clearly made a controversial move with such a diverse cast, but it's safe to say that the actors' races had no bearing on their performance. Besides, when was the last time an adaptation was a one-to-one -one copy of the source material? I mean, Daenerys Targaryen has purple eyes in A Song of Ice and Fire, but you don't see anyone rioting over Amelia Clark's green eyes now, do you? I'd say that the backlash was unwarranted and over the top, but not all of it was racist. Sure, some fans were up in arms about Disa being black, but they also had a huge problem with her lack of a beard. Hold up, do dwarf women really have beards? Indeed they do. The history of Middle Earth says it pretty clearly, and there's even a scene in The Two Towers that mentions it. Based on the lore, dwarven women were practically indistinguishable from men, and Namvite doesn't look masculine by any stretch of imagination. Sure, she has some sideburns on either side of her face, but that just wasn't enough for the fans. They quickly latched onto this as further proof that the show wasn't taking the source material seriously. In fact, that seems to be at the heart of the outrage among most Lord of the Rings fans. After all, Rings of Power had some serious deviations from the lore. For one thing, what in Eru's name are hobbits doing in Middle-earth during the Second Age? Tolkien's clearly stated that hobbits came first into existence during the Third Age, so Eleanor, Poppy, and the rest of their tribe are about 2,000 years early to the party. The showrunners tried to find a workaround for this by calling them Harfoots instead of hobbits, but the similarities are pretty obvious. Eleanor Brandyfoot sounds like someone straight out of the Shire, and the culture of her people seems like a primitive version of the fun-loving hobbit lifestyle we saw in Lord of the Rings. Maybe the showrunners knew that hobbits were a key part of Tolkien's novels and Peter Jackson's trilogy, but it's hard to see this as anything other than a blatant corruption of the lore. Now, I can maybe forgive the showrunners for that, but here's what I seriously don't get. What is with Aaron Deer and Brownwind's romance? Don't get me wrong, Nazanid Boinadi and Ismail Cruz Cordova have excellent on-screen chemistry. Their characters seem to genuinely love each other, but this is Lord of the Rings we're talking about, not Romeo and Juliet. Human and elf pairings were exceptionally rare in Tolkien's lore. In fact, it's only happened three times in the history of Middle-earth. Aragorn and Arwen make the cut, of course. But there's also the iconic, mythical romance of Beren and Luthien. Also remember when Galadriel gifted Frodo the Light of in Lothlorien? It's named after a seafaring half-elf. And his parents, Tuor and Adril, were just the second human and elf couple to ever exist. If Rings of Power was a sequel, I'd be willing to give Arendir and Bronwyn a pass. But canically speaking, there were only two such pairings by the Second Age. 
This change basically messes up the whole timeline, not to mention how it cheapens Aragon and Arwen's tragic romance. Apart from this questionable love story, fans also took issue with how the origins of Mitriel were changed. In the books, Mitriel's a super strong, ultra light metal. It's used to make coats of armor and weapons, but it doesn't have any supernatural origins. I guess that wasn't enough for the Rings of Power showrunners, because for some reason, they decided to tie Mitriel's origins to the Silmarils, just to fill you in. The Silmarils were magical, evilish jewels that represented the dazzling beauty of the two trees of Valinor. They played a huge role in the conflict against Morgoth. But in Rings of Power, one of these jewels merged with a tree on top of the Khazad Dun, and its powers created a veil of Mitriel in the mountains. This does a huge disservice to the dwarves, because Mitriel's a testament to their mining and craftsmanship, and it also changes the entire story for the Silmarils. Fans weren't too happy about this mind-boggling change, which explains why they've been so angry about the whole series. Now, one thing I'll say is that this backlash is nothing new. Peter Jackson was accused of making changes too, and they weren't exactly minor alterations. Like the Lord of the Rings movies completely skip over Tom Bombadil, aka one of the most interesting characters from the books. The whole scouring of the Shire sequence is nowhere to be found either, even though it was meant to symbolize how the hobbits had grown during their adventures. What's more, we see the elves joining the forces of Rohan to fight off Saruman's armies in the Two Towers. But the Odin King didn't have any allies in the books. Legolas was the only elf president at Helm's Deep in Tolkien's original work. And that didn't stop Peter Jackson from taking some creative license by throwing in a few extra evilish archers. Oh, and that whole Eye of Sauron thing? It's entirely unique to the films. The books describe the flaming eye as a metaphor, but they also clearly mention that Sauron's spirit took on a humanoid form after his body was destroyed. Gollum even describes seeing the Dark Lord's four-fingered hand in the novels. So despite how awesome the Eye of Sauron looked on screen, it comes from the mind of Peter Jackson, not J.R.R. Tolkien. Sure, the Ring of Powers might have brought even bigger changes to the lore, but Peter Jackson wasn't exactly a purist either. Although fans are clearly more ticked off this time around, because the Rings of Power got absolutely miserable ratings when it was released. You know you've messed up when just 37% of viewers end up finishing your show. And that's just the sort of pickle the Ring of Power's showrunners found themselves in. Amazon poured nearly half a billion dollars into the first season alone. And given how they're planning at least four more seasons, something tells me they're gonna go into crisis mode pretty soon. After all, Amazon was banking on the Rings of Power to serve as Prime's main attraction, but it only seems to have alienated all the fans instead. Because of the complaints about the robotic dialogue, the absurd plot devices, and not to mention how much the show's backtracked from the actual source material, the show suffered a horrible release, while critics were a bit more forgiving. Nothing matters more than getting those viewership numbers up. Season 2 of The Rings of Power is slated for release in 2024, and we'll have to wait and see if the showrunners managed to right their past wrongs. So from the embarrassing viewership of The Rings of Power, to the controversial choice to cast black and Latino actors for fan favorite characters. This was all you needed to know about why Lord of the Rings fans are angry.